Welcome to SVG TV News for Friday, July 1st, 2016. I'm Lafern Fraser with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves has expressed his satisfaction with the efforts of the SVG National Trust in preserving the petroglyphs which were discovered at the Argyle International Airport site. Speaking at a lecture organized by the St. Vincent National Trust, the Prime Minister spoke on the importance of this country's history and said during the initial stages of the development of the AIA, the discovery of the first petroglyphs have resulted in the country having to seek expert help to ensure that they were properly protected. Camilla said that they held up the works for the airport for a few months. Well, it was longer than a few months, I can tell you. It was um, two years, maybe more. Because you see where the rock, where this very hard rock is, where they were seeking to remove these petroglyphs. You couldn't do any work on the drains nearby nor indeed to put down any of the base and certainly not any of the concrete or the asphalt for the runway at the third kilometer because the vibration from the, 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 the works on the rock would have affected the, the drains and if you went and did the work there and certainly the, the, the runway. Dr. Gonsalves added that he dismissed useless suggestions to destroy the petroglyphs and does not regret his decision. There were some persons in the, in the community and you heard a few on, on radio and you heard a few elsewhere. Well, why don't just dynamite the whole thing? Why are you waiting on a few some petroglyphs or some carib they drop up upon the, upon the stone. But thankfully, everyone decided that, look, let's have a little patience. Let us apply our hearts to wisdom and get the work done. So what if you wait a little longer for saving this important part of our heritage, part of our, it's called messages in the rock, but it's really memory in the rock. And there are several pieces of memory and messages at, the, at that site. And I really want to thank all those who came from other countries to come and help us. The archaeologists and of course, finally the, 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 the Argentinians. The Prime Minister further added the artifacts found at the site of the AIA should provide a sense of national identity. I believe that because of the excavation at the site and all that we have, all that everyone has done to the work in relation to the, the, the pottery, the, the way indigenous people lived, um, all of these things have made us get a, a renewed, a fresh insight into our history. And of course, as was pointed out, Argyle is a, is, a, is a rich site of history, a rich locale. As of today, July 1st, the one cent and two cent coins will no longer be issued in member states of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. The coins will, however, remain legal tender up to the 30th of June 2020 and can be can transacted at face value. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's website advises that the Monetary Council took the decision to withdraw the one and two cent coins from circulation given the low purchasing power of the coins and the expense associated with their production. Production. Governor of the ECCB, Timothy Antoine, said that the, a set of rounding rules was introduced last year to allow retailers and consumers to conduct cash transactions with little interruption. Governor Antoine says this procedure has been going well. We were losing money on one cents and two cents. A central bank not supposed to lose money on issuing currency. It's supposed to make money, not lose. So we had to deal with that. One cent, two cent, and five cent pieces. We actually lose money on those. So 
that's why you know we so far we've taken care of the one and two cent pieces and um, other countries I think Canada did it sometime ago Barbados other countries have had to take them on because they just what them which shop you go in and pay and anything costing one cent or two cent it's a nuisance and what we found is a lot of people were already averaging sorry wrong the notes some cases they wrong down to 25 cents <laughs> so so that has gone smoothly that has gone smoothly Opposition Member of Parliament for West Kingstown, Daniel Cummings, is accusing the ruling Unity Labour Party, or the ULP, of not being seriously interested in the well-being of banana farmers in the country. Cummings, who was speaking on radio this week, says the ULP administration is making persons reliant on their provisions instead of giving them opportunities to develop their own techniques to earn a living. This government has no intention of reviving the banana industry. Mm -hmm. That this government strives on keeping the former banana farmers in subservience, so, depending on them for handouts. Everybody understands the importance of the banana industry to our economy. Yeah. I heard the, the, the new um, Prime Minister a little after he was elected in St. Louis. This has implications for the national economy. Yeah. I mean, so many businesses in Kingstown depend on yes. the banana yes. industry. Oh yes. oh, yes. The trucking business. Yes. I mean, when banana farmers have money, they buy groceries, Everything. they buy haberdashery, yeah. they build they houses, they send the children to school. Yes. You know, this carnival, nobody moving up. You, you walk, you drive to Kingston in the evening now. You will see some change on this weekend because of yes, content. Yeah. But a day outside of that, absolutely nothing happening. Head of the major crime unit, Inspector Avland Brown, is appealing to persons to beef up their own security for the carnival season. Inspector Brown says while the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force have their strategies to ensure a safe Vinci Mass 2016, persons can assist the police in looking out for one another. He said he is pleased to see that promoters of several events have heeded the call by the police and have put in place safety measures to curb any outbreak of violence. If you're having a particular show and it has a certain amount of persons, when you apply for permission to have that show, you need to put certain security measures in place. And I think when you get that permission to have those shows from the Commission of Police, they are all spelled out as to what your responsibilities are during any event, not just Carnival alone, but during any event at all. Right. Okay? And we also see that persons who are having private shows what they do, they employ in, um, to assist the police in that regard, they employ in different security forms and services. Some would even guard dogs as well, which, which I think is, is a boost to the security system. Inspector Brown further outlined several protection measures which citizens and visitors alike can adopt to ensure their safety during the festive season. There may be potential hijackers uh, for vehicles moving to, in and out of Kingston. And the hijackers or thieves, as you want to call them, would tend to come from corners. So what we advise persons to do really is to, especially from the driver's side, to always have that door lock and the windscreen up. So it pose some sort of difficulty for would-be thieves, you know, coming from areas. You may be going places sometime and see the, the road is blocked. If you think you cannot pass, do not come out of the vehicle. Blow your horn relentlessly call for help, scream for help, because this is what the, the, the thieves normally do. They normally block the road so that persons, when they come out of the vehicles, they will get to do them harm, they will get to rob them, they might get to interfere with ladies, you know, sometimes ladies roll by themselves. Well, well, that's the issue we want to avoid here. Now, if you park in your vehicles for the carnival season, we want you to park your vehicles, say, in lighted areas, and areas that are that are populated with persons and other vehicles. Because if you park your vehicle in, 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 in the dark areas, you are giving the thieves an opportunity to break into your vehicles. The police inspector says while officers would be on constant patrol in and out of Kingstown, members of the SVG Coast Guard service will also be on their alert. He further urges persons not to try to settle scores with others during this time. Would there be a stop and search? In and out of uh, Kingston, especially Saturday night, Sunday night, to Victoria Park. There will be stop and search throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. So if you come to Kingston and you believe you only see police in Kingston, 
the police would be in Orwell. Police would be in Chattabella. Police would be any way you possibly think police can be. Right. Right, right. And what can you say on, on, on behalf of the Coast Guard? I mean, I know pers persons are very skillful, and they, they, they're very crafty. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can come into Kingston by boat. They can. The Coast Guard is on patrol as well. The Coast Guard is also assisting with the, with the, with the stop and searches that we're doing. So they're on board as well. Every department in the police force is on board. In tonight's carnival beat, the Cyan Hill Steel Orchestra captured first place in the panorama competition last night at the Steel and Glitter event. Sea Operation Starlift Steel Orchestra came in second. Winfresh Scotiabank Southeast Steel Orchestra took the third position. Elite Steel Orchestra was fourth, while Symphonic Steel Orchestra was fifth. Here are some highlights from the top four performances. In the section of the band's competition, High Voltage Mass Production with their production All That Lathers took the first spot with their portrayal of Powder Soap. Blondie Bird and Friends with their production of Sweet Temptation took the second spot with their portrayal of Social Media. Third place went to Lynx Mass Band with their production of Send This, Send That and their portrayal of Sunset Strong Rum. Minutes from now, the 10 beauties from around the Caribbean will be competing in the prestigious Miss Caraval pageant. And the show's headliner, though based in the UK, is St. Vincent and the Grenadines' very own Marlon Rudette. Vincentian international recording artist Marlon Rudette, formerly of Matafix, and his seven-member band arrived from the United Kingdom, England, yesterday to a warm welcome. He was met at the E.T. Joshua Airport by Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture, Cecil Mackey, officials from the Board of Directors of the Carnival Development Corporation, the, the ten Miss Caraval contestants and their chaperones, as well as members of the Beauty Shows Committee and the media. Minister Mackey indicated that it was a joy to have Rudette bring his band to St. Vincent so that they can get a true appreciation and understanding of where he came from and he also urged all artists in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to aim for the sky as Rudette had. A world class act. Mm -hmm. um, you play your craft in uh, Europe especially all over the world and uh, you are well known for the quality of music that you would have turned out over the years and we are happy that we assisted in building that foundation for you um, to take off to that level. As a ministry, uh, we point to you very often in terms of what you have been able to achieve. And we say to the young artists, if Marlon can do it, it means that we can all do it as well. Definitely. I mean, you might not have, uh, as an artist, um, all that is required and desired at the beginning. But once you stay focused, once you are disciplined and once you have a clear aim and objective, as you no doubt had, then the sky is the limit. 
Rudat expressed his gratitude to the CDC for inviting him to perform here at home for the very first time. Back a yard is where my heart is, you know. <laughs> That's one of the lyrics in Big City Life. Um, when I was growing up, there was a saying, you need to perform a yard before you perform abroad. <laughs> but I did it the wrong way around. I did it the other way around. It's a massive honor um, for me to be back in the island where it all started, really, the, the roots of the inspiration for my career. Um, from the age of eight until 17, I was here. Those are the brick-building years in a young man's life. Um, the musical inspirations that I was exposed to, the culture, the language, all of that is infused in um, the Matterfix albums, but then also um, the Marlon Rudet albums um, later on. Um, and as I was sitting on, on the small plane on the SVG Air coming in, those thoughts, the, that pride just filled me because to, to, to bring these kindred spirits with me for the first time, um, I don't take it for granted ever, you know, I'm very, very lucky to, to have that opportunity. Rudat also spoke of what patrons should expect from his band and himself at tonight's show, which commences at 8 p.m. at the Victoria Park. And 31 years of exquisite pageantry will be explored this evening at Carnival City Victoria Park as 10 of the Caribbean's beauties vie for the coveted Miss Caravel title 2016. The contestants are Chelsea Hughes, Miss Anguilla, Cheryl Ford, Miss Barbados, Tassia Floysak, Miss Dominica, Nianka Samuel Robinson, Miss Grenada, Tabiana Tuit, Miss Montserrat, Orangel Eskin, Miss St. Kitts and Nevis, Ioana David, Miss St. Lucia, Janicia Francis, Miss Trinidad and Tobago, Michelle Sinuez, Miss Venezuela, and Nikiana Williams, Miss St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In more carnival beat, the much anticipated competitions for Vinci Mass 2016 will be staged this weekend. And the first competitive event we've told you about just moments ago is the Miss Caraval pageant, which will kick off this evening at 8 p.m. That's just minutes from now. Tomorrow evening, it will be the turn of the Soka and Raga Soka artists. And on Sunday, the Calypsonians will take the stage at Carnival City Victoria Park at Dimash Gras. Monday, July 4th is the T-shirt bands competition and Tuesday, July 5th will be the turn for the mass bands. They will bring the curtains down on Vinci Mass 2016. Earlier today, SVG TV News spoke with a few carnival revelers who say they've been and enjoying the season thus far. Mass actually. Um, we have Miss Caraval tonight. Well, you know, everybody looking forward to Soka Monarch tomorrow, which is the biggest show. And then on Sunday night, we have Dimash Gra. And uh, Tuesday, we, ha we have the Mass. So, so far, I think it's really, really building up. I see a lot of foreigners. We expect a lot more coming in from this evening for, for the weekend. As an artist, Flanka the Watanka, this year Carnival is going very, very, very well. Trust me, I'm not lie about it. I feel good about it. I'm proud of myself about it because Flanka up in every show. So come on act tomorrow, I'm going to shell long that. Well, I'm enjoying myself. I come all the way from Union Island to come to Vinci Mass and I enjoy myself very good. Well, the um, Carnival has been doing good so far, you know me? We're enjoying all the new artists, them. everything going good, the music good, keto, you know me? Everything still off right now, right now we enjoy ourselves on the square. Start to warm up to the Friday. Start to warm up, people start to come in and so on. Everybody who get a little paper today won't come by and they're going to have their little drink and so on and enjoy the carnival and so on. Not because the rain out. Carnival is nice at Lano Bar and I'm enjoying it. I'm happy. Uh, well, so far, you know, we don't go all the shows, you know. Uh, since me there since last Friday, all the shows, you know. So, tonight we're going to Miss Carnival, tomorrow, so come on, uh, Sunday, everything we are going. You understand? You don't know Vincey Mars, Hattie's Carnival. So, we must live, you know.